All right, let's just go back in again. It's a it's a flashback to the time with until dawn where I replayed the entire game and I revert. What I did that time is I reversed who died because I had like a. I think I had like a 50-50 split-ish, so I specifically killed off every character that lived in my first playthrough and, and uh, saved every character that died in my first playthrough. And that was a fun route. I think in this one I'm largely gonna just kinda try to make like the opposite choices I made last time and see how much like variability there is in the story and kind of test the game to its limits there a bit. I don't know if this is a good idea. I don't know. It's a it's a scary experiment because you n you never know how good the choices are going to be until you've seen them and you're, then they get sunk cost. You're like, well, we've already doing this. Uh, I also don't know if this series is doing well or if people even liked the original playthrough or watched it because it hasn't. I I am immediately recording this right afterwards without waiting because I figure if I'm going to do this, I should do it when I remember the game most clearly, which is like immediately. Uh, as opposed to waiting like a month and checking at, checking it out later and then trying to remember how the last playthrough went. So, we're just gonna go, and hopefully this is a good idea, and not like uh, a month-long death march where everyone's like, Oh, he's doing it again? Why didn't he play something else? Because, uh, well, <laughs> choices are being made. But I want to see how much uh, things get switched out and what kind of other routes can happen. And that was an interesting-ish thing last time. I'm also going to get every piece of evidence, hopefully. Uh, it's a relatively straightforward list, and they're just all in... There's one piece of evidence in every chapter. And so hopefully I can get all those, and then we'll have the full version of the podcast. And I don't... I have not checked. Maybe that causes more narrative to happen in the podcast, at least, or some kind of payoff. Or maybe they're just like, gold star, buddy. That sure was a lot. If nothing else, we'll, we'll at least have the full list version of the podcast. Speaking of which, before we start... The, the podcast is just in here. And it might be kind of long and a bit much to all sit through right now, but at the very least... Why not listen to the one that the thing is about, you know? Welcome to Bizarre Yet Bonafide. The podcast of the paranormal. Anton, what do you get if you combine a spooky forest, a traveling sideshow, and a big fire? Is this a joke? I don't know, arthritis? No, what? Shut up. No, you get death, whispers in the woods, a lost baby boy, and revenge. I don't get it. Welcome to Bizarre Yet Bonafide, the podcast of the paranormal. I'm Grace. And I'm Anton. And together we strive to prove... Or disprove... The presence of supernatural forces in real-life true crime cases. Spoiler alert, we never will. That's a lie and you know it. I am yet to be convinced that we share this world with ghouls and goblins. And that's how it works, folks. I investigate the unknown with an open mind and a thirst for truth. And Anton is a fun sponge. Hey. You started it. So where are we with this? What's next? Let's get this over with. You could at least pretend to be interested. No, I am. I'm super interested. Ghost in the woods. Let's do this. <sighs> okay. This is the story of the Hag of Hackett's Quarry. Ooh, scary. Did you come up with that? Deep in the wilderness of upstate New York lies a town with a population in the low hundreds. A quiet place that nobody really tends to visit, mainly because it's so remote and out of the way that nobody can find it on a map. A town called North Kill. Oh boy. No, I swear, that's its real name. Now. The Hag of Hackett's Quarry is a myth perpetuated by the locals of Northkill about the ghostly figure of a woman who haunts the surrounding woods and quarry, crying out for her lost boy. Why? What happened to him? Well, here's the thing. Nobody knows. As far as records go, there was no boy. Convenient. Ugh, I'm trying to set the scene. Okay. So this place, these woods, this is where those two hikers went missing, right, a while back? Has that got anything to do with this whole ghost thing? Well, yes and no. Forget about the ghost in the woods for a minute. Done. Can I interest you in a blazing fire that burned the traveling show to the ground? 
Toasty. I like it. So this is where it all started, allegedly. Harem Scarum, a traveling sideshow that set up shop in Hackett Woods. Wait, hold up. Traveling sideshows, is that still a thing? Uh, yeah, apparently. And this was before the hikers went missing? They're still looking for them, right? Yeah, still missing, but get this. There are rumors that those guys weren't hikers at all, but ghost hunters who went in search of answers and fell victim to the mercy of the hag of Hackett's quarry, never to be seen again. Like us. Except for the fell victim to the mercy of the blah, 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 blah part. We're, we're more like um, ghost investigators. Specter sleuths? Sure. So what happened next? Well, according to reports from the local paper, the North Kill Gazette, some hay bales caught fire during the opening night, and that spread pretty quickly. Before they knew it, the whole place was up in smoke, including the show's leading lady and her alleged baby boy. Baby? Yes, honey? Boo, you know what I mean. It doesn't say the kid's age. The rumors floating around say that he was one of her freaks. Can you say freaks? Attractions? Exhibits? Employees? Let's go with that. Well, anyway, this woman, whatever her name was, it wasn't published, at least not that I've seen, she took a liking to this child, adopted him as her own. But he was in the show? What was his thing? Silas the dog boy, according to the posters. So, like, a feral child, I guess? That's fucked up, that she'd parade him around like that? Yeah, and it gets more fucked up. He was thought lost in the fire, so she burned too whilst she searched for him in the wreckage. And was he lost in the fire? Only her body was recovered, along with the old North Kill Sheriff and some visitors. No sign of the boy. <sighs> That's fucking rad. Uh... Oh, but yeah, sucks about the whole people dying thing. That's cold. I'm sorry, but you're the one trying to make it about ghosts and shit. Right. Speaking of... This is where the reports come in. People claim to hear the sound of burning trees and the pained, yearning whispers of the woman as she still to this day searches for her boy, stuck between this life and the next. Has it ever occurred to you that it could just be a rumor made up by the landowners to scare people away from starting fires in their woods? Sure, but that's why they have private property signs. There's a summer camp nearby, so I doubt they'd want to scare the kids too bad. I don't know. That's kind of what summer camp is for, right? I don't know. I never went. You never went to camp? No. My mom thought it'd be better if I spent my summers working so I could get some good experience and land a successful career. Like presenting a podcast about things that don't exist? You're mean. You're mean today. I'm sorry. I actually love doing this. I may not believe in the spooky shit, but I think we work well together, comically speaking. Comically speaking, yeah, we do. Mm. Okay, so what else? Scare me. Freak my shit out. Okay, so as you know, I ventured out to Hackett Woods last weekend. You did? Yes, I told you this. You never listen. Right, yes. You stayed at some hilariously named motel? The Harbinger Motel. <laughs> That's it. You can't make this stuff up. Well, you can. So I stayed there, and one night I decided to go into the woods. Now, I didn't see jack shit. There was, like, no moon, and I only had a small flashlight. But I did record what I heard. Shall I play it? Go nuts, buddy. Okay. Here goes. Did you hear it? Hear what? Exactly. Nothing, huh? Yeah, a big steaming pile of nada. But maybe she just doesn't want to be found, you know? What kind of ghost is like, oh, hell yeah, bring me the mic. This is my moment. Maybe she knows exactly how to hide from those she doesn't want to see her. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe your mom should have let you go to summer camp. Then at least you'd recognize when a ghost story is just a story. So that's it. That's all I got. For real? No, like, photos or anything? Nope. Dang it, I was this close to believing. For real? Psych, nah, sorry. It just sounds like a freak accident to me. Pun not intended. Okay, well, that's us. The Hag of Hackett's Quarry. Bizarre, but not bona fide. Not yet, anyway. Wait, what do you mean, not yet? I don't know. I just have a feeling. I feel like we're not done here. I am. I'm done here. Thanks for listening, bonafiders. Um, what was that? New 
new pet name for our listeners? Bonafiders? I just thought I'd try it out. No. Thoughts? No. Okay, back to the drawing board. I think that's for the best. See you next time, folks. Peace out. That was chunky. Not like actually as long as you'd expect a podcast to be, but uh, much longer than I'd expect a video game podcast to be as like a little menu extra. That was it went on for actually quite a bit. Uh, so she's very easily convinced because uh, she she found zero evidence. She's like, it's perfect. This only reinforces my ideas. Uh, how many people went to summer camp in the comments or whatever, y'all? Because uh, I, I I feel like I basically never even heard about summer camp. So like, no, I never went to summer camp. It's just like a thing that people in the 80s did maybe in movies. I'm maybe the guy... Maybe my take on summer camp is the equivalent of Dylan with the fucking corded phone or something, because I, I just genuinely do not know. But I actually I do I do kind of like those two. They have a, they do have kind of a fun dynamic uh, that almost works. It's a, it's very very obviously scripted. Like there's a a pace and delivery to it. That's that's you just you can tell it's not a podcast that's just going on its own. I was thinking about whether or not I should do, whether or not I should do all the other ones throughout the series maybe. I don't think they're gonna be relevant, but they're there. I could just bulk record them later and add them to every other episode or something. I don't know. Paste them out. There's not anywhere that I can put them where they don't interrupt the flow, besides just endings of episodes, I guess. I imagine that they're dropping some hit 80s rock music that is just enough, close enough to the tone of the game that it makes sense here. But I'm... I feel like it was a good idea to go with the other option. Lance Hendrickson. There's that mystery solved without me having to do any research. Miles Robbins. Oh, the guy's name is Tim Robbins, right? Is he actually his son? Well, am I right? Did I clock that? Justice is quite a first name. Why'd you kill the music? I think you know why. Um, <laughs> I don't think I do. It begins with an L? Like the L word? Lesbians? Lost, Max. We're lost. We're just, we're in geographic flux. Right, so, lost. That's debatable. Oh, heads up. Oh no, I dropped a... Nice catch there, hon. I'm not the one who hit the pothole. Well, maybe the pothole hit us. Ever think about that? Wow, that is like Olympic level goalpost moving. Thank you. Very impressive. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, still totally lost. <sighs> That's a really bad phone stand. You know what, Max? It's okay. It doesn't make you any less of a man. You know, if Columbus hadn't gotten lost and landed on these golden shores, there would be no United States of America. Goodbye hot dogs, see you later apple pie, 
Columbus never actually landed in North America. What are you talking about? Didn't even know he wasn't in Asia. Are you serious? Just another guy who didn't want to admit he was lost. Well, just another guy who's got a whole day named after him, so put that in your pipe and smoke it. Oh my god. Okay, just get us to camp already before I roll my eyes out of my head, please. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it. He really did self own there, didn't he? Just looped right back around at him. The leaflet. Were there any directions on the flyer? No, just a fake bunch of kids faking it around a fake fire pit. That was a lot of fake. <laughs> what is it, the tutorial? Everything okay? Yeah, all good. Hey, eyes on the road, mister. Oh. Granny. Who? I'm not gonna just intentionally fail every QT because that could backfire very quickly and I only have three bonus lives in New Game Plus. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. I mean, still in one piece. Jesus Christ, what do you think that was? A bear? What? No, no, Max, it wasn't a bear. What was it? I think it was a person. Oh, are you serious? Do you think we hit a person? I don't know. I mean, it was really cl close, like really close, but maybe we didn't. What is it? I really have this car up. Well, maybe it looks worse than it is. Uh, I should check out the damage before we try to start it up again, huh? Could you grab my, uh, the, the toolbox from the trunk? Yeah, yeah, okay. I doubt, especially in this intro, that you can fuck things up enough where anyone actually dies. So I figure I might as well just like completely ruin everything, given the chance, and see see what take what form it takes. It's not so bad. My mom's gonna kill me. Because Laura has some pretty extreme plot armor, I figure, from what we know. At least for much later. It really is just sticking out, inviting you to look at it. So I guess we'll see if he brings it up on his own or not. Yeah. Or if it ever comes up at all. Yeah, actually, if you could just shine a light right here. There you go. Perfect, thank you. The sooner we get out of here, the better. Just picture yourself curling up in front of a big old fire pit singing campfire sing-alongs. I don't think people curl up right in front of big old fire pits. Why not? Uh, they don't want to catch on fire. And then picture yourself curling up in front of a big old space heater. Well, anywhere's better than here. I guess how close is close. The name Silas gets dropped quick. Where are you going? Just over here. Just stay there for a second, okay? I'm almost done. What? You're not the boss of me. I just don't want you wandering off on your own. Excuse me. That's not what I meant. Yeah, it better not be. I, I'm sorry. I, I really got to concentrate for a okay. second, okay? Yes. Look, I think there's someone down there, okay? What's that? They could be hurt. I'm gonna go check it out. I 
So I imagine that stump does not actually increase the damage to the car. Good idea, Laura. So thoughtful of you. <laughs> Nailed it. He didn't even... Alright, well I talk about her lack of screaming and whatnot, but he didn't even react to that one. When she actually did, so... Oh. <laughs> there it is. Wow, they're just in spots. Yeah, all my all my collectors have started over. Are those burn marks around the edges? I feel like if it was going to burn, it was going to burn all the way. <laughs> But they're trying to set up the fire. Nope. I'm here immediately. What the hell? Silas the dog boy. And now you just gotta find your way right back to here again. Yikes. This is too weird. I wonder why the description for the thing says S the dog boy, but she says Silas the dog boy like it's clearly legible apparently. Silas. You want a hug? Make it feel better. Yeah, she's got that hat on with the ponytail hole. So I guess that is her hat. So they must have had the wrong bag? That's the scariest word in the English language. I'm so sorry for what's about to happen. <laughs> How? Wow. <laughs> That's really unfortunate. No. Oh no. It's like a train wreck. Max? Max? Max! Hey, hey, why are you shouting? What? Oh, he heard it. What the hell was that? Car. Now. Oh, yeah. Now. Max. Okay. Did you see it? No, but I heard something. Let's just get out of here. I don't think that happened last time, did it? Come on. It. I did check it, and it was fine. Honey, I know you're on edge, but you gotta calm down, okay? I am not on edge, Max. I'm freaking the fuck 
go. It was probably just an animal or no, something. No, it wasn't an animal. You didn't see it. It was a woman. Lord, or this isn't helping, all right? Go. There we go. We're good. See? Please just get us out of here. Okay. I'm trying. I'm trying. We're okay. We're safe in the car, really. We're gonna be okay. Jeez! Oh, <gasps> fuck. Oh, my God. My heart just exploded. Roll it down. I've seen you decapitated before. Are either of you injured? No. Uh, well, she bumped her head. Well, barely, barely bumped it. I mean, I, can, I can't even feel it. My bump, not my head. I'm fine. Really, we're fine. We're just a little shaken up. <sighs> well, you folks want to tell me what happened here? So the real sheriff died in the fire five years ago, right? Six years ago. Uh, well, we were just driving and it's really, really dark out here. And um, I don't know, we, we must have had like a, a pothole or something because we swerved and now here we are. I mean, I'm, these roads are really not in great shape. Yeah. Sir? car running sir I take it he's got blood on his neck because he was Silent. he was blooded I'm scary as cop I don't know this is my first cop what like ever uh, yeah I'm not a criminal like maybe he washed the blood off to d have this scene essentially <laughs> that's probably why he smells so bad too Now you folks want to tell me just what in the hell you are doing all the way out here this late at night. We at least have some idea of why he's so anxious now. Come to think of it, when, when Chris is freaking out later, a lot of that's probably because of the fact that he, uh, he's probably like on the way to turning into a werewolf. This guy's not, but he's knows, he knows what's going on around him. She's a mess now because I just, she just got thrown in the mud twice. We were just taken in the sights, officer. Is that a crime? Ma'am, I'm gonna take it by the tone of your voice that you were unaware that this is an open season hunting zone until tomorrow. Oh, shit. Uh, no, didn't know that. <laughs> we were kind of lost, actually. What is your intended destination? We're headed up to Hackett's Quarry. Hmm, not the camp. It's a free place to stay, so, yeah. <sighs> You're not gonna make it to Hackett's Quarry. Not tonight. Harbinger Motel. It's the nearest place you can bunk up there for the night, okay? Uh, I think we're just gonna stick to the plan, sir. I mean, Mr. Hackett knows we're coming and we called ahead. No, ma'am, you're gonna head to the Harbinger Motel. Do you understand? Okay, fine. Yeah, we'll head to the motel. Understood. Uh, there's just one small problem. I forgot to spring for the middle of nowhere coverage plan on my phone. What he means is we're lost completely. All right, ma'am. Step out of the vehicle. Wait, what? Um. I just want to show you how to get to the motel on your map there. Okay? Uh, for sure. He, he chooses exclusively so, the worst possible phrases. The Why? Okay. I guess he's reducing the number of people he's risking with the the wolves, but even that's super questionable. 
You're not gonna make it to Hackett's Quarry. Ma'am, get out of the vehicle. She says, she says every single worst possible way of phrasing anything. So, we... Evil mouth pencil. Are right about here. Harbinger Motel... is here. Right, okay, and where was Hackett's Quarry again? Well... I'm sure the fine folks at the Harbinger Motel can guide you there. First thing in the morning. Right. Does licking a pencil even do anything? I've never done that. And I've used pencils forever. They just work on their own, honestly. Still, please. What is happening? What are you doing? Hold. Still. What is happening now? Just wiping her face? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There. Fresh as a daisy. What the fuck? Oh, return to vehicle, ma'am. What the fuck? <laughs> What were the sounds he was making? He didn't even actually get the mud off her What was he doing? That was so fucking creepy. Harbinger Motel. Stay on the road. Watch out for potholes. Don't you need like Have a statement? Have a good night. <laughs> I fully understand his motivations and background and still don't know what the fuck that was. Man. Why is this guy just sitting there? Thanks for all your help, though, back there. What is that supposed to mean? You were shaking like a broken washing machine. I could have used a little backup. I mean, he clearly liked you better. Well, I'm very likable. <laughs> All right, let's get back on the road. Yes. I think I've had enough woodland encounters for one night. Thank you very much. Agreed. So where's this motel? Okay, so we're here, mm -hmm. and the motel is here. Okay. But we're going here. What's there? Hackett's quarry. How'd you do that? I don't know. I kind of tricked him into showing me. <laughs> Very slick. <laughs> we shouldn't just get to the motel. It's going to kill us. Advice. Honey, you really want to listen to the advice of some creep-ass cop who told us in the middle of the creep-ass woods to go to some creep-ass hotel? No, that sounds terrible. Yeah. Let's hit the road, shall we? That's what I thought. Ma'am? Oh my god, if he called me ma'am one more time, I was gonna shove that badge up his dick hole. <laughs> Seriously, do I look like a ma'am to you? I got like 20 years before I'm a ma'am. Mm-hmm. What? I... 20 is... debatable. Easy. I mean, I'm kinda into ma'ams. <laughs> okay, we're done here. <laughs> They're quipping. They got, they got quips. He still drives really weird. I was so disappointed when I found out that she just fucking didn't even know. Like, she didn't actually talk to Chris. You gotta be kidding me. There's nobody here. We drive all the way the fuck out Max, here. Max, can we just look around before we jump to conclusions? Did you actually even talk to Mr. Hackett or did you just leave a message? Well, what's the difference? This. This is the difference. Hello? I guess he doesn't check his voicemail. How was I supposed to know that? I mean, clearly there's somebody here. Yeah, or it's just an abandoned car and this is a complete waste Why of time. Why would there be an abandoned... I'll get yeah. the car. Max, come on. Max, don't be a dick. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So that's Chris's car. And I guess Travis locked him in the cellar as per their plan. 
I, 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 the moment we found out about cards, I regretted not walking all the way down here to see if they th threw a, a card my way. You can just barely shine your light around to see stuff in there. Is that a Ouija board? No, maybe? Okay, well we did find the Fool card, so I guess that was the card I missed. You just walk a very slightly different path at the beginning of the forest and it completely changes what you find. It's rough, because you could just be, it could just be amount, an amount of, like, standing by the right window and then suddenly the camera cuts to something completely different. I'm not going to try that much harder to find them, because it's just kind of a bummer, gameplay-wise, to just to just sit here and uh, stare at every single wall. In fact, this is going to be a faster playthrough, where I explore less, probably, because we already have seen it before. What about you going on this side of the path? All things considered, he has some pretty heavy tools in his toolbox. Hey! Hey, are you okay? I'll be right back, I'm gonna get some help. That is a pretty alarming escalation. They're just like, oh, let's go out to the summer camp. Max! There's somebody in the Max, cellar! Get over here! What's going on? There's somebody in the bunker. I think they might be stuck. Stuck? Is it Mr. Hackett? I, I don't know. Just bring some tools so we can break the lock. Hey, I'm back. We're gonna get you out of there. Hey. hey. Wait, what, what are these? I don't know. You just said tools. Why didn't you just bring... Look, there's someone in there. Uh, I'm not seeing anyone. What? No, look. I'm looking. I am. It's a really big cellar. The music sting, even though we saw it leave. There, there was definitely someone there. Okay, okay, so... Wow, look at my amazing options. You sure? Oh, it's two wrenches. I didn't know there was two wrenches. She's gonna do something sneaky. She's gonna do something. She's gonna do something clever with the wrenches. Thought online. She's got like a thing to show off, but had to open a lock. Damn. I thought it was a wrench. I'm like, that's useless. Yeah. They made such a point about how loud it is, is that, is that going to change things up a lot? Or not at all? You've seen the Evil Dead, right? Hello? That's their fire disposal problem uh, solution. There's just one bucket of water. Presumably there's water inside of it. Are you hurt? Do you exist? They could use that. They could throw that at the wolf if they knew. Hey, be careful. Why does he just sit down? Besides the fact that nobody's ever with you. No, people are with you sometimes. Now you walk around in, in pairs. Silver-backed mirror. Travis was prepared to kill her in that other scene. Max? 
So we now know this was a sheep. Hun, maybe it was a possum or something. No, there was there was someone here, I swear. Hey. It's been kind of a night, you know? Let's just get to the motel. We can come back here first thing in the morning. We can check everything out, but... I mean, you must be exhausted. I know I am. I think our imagination... Max? That camera angle could not scream more that something's about to happen. Be a no max path? Is that an option? It feels like she pretty much gets caught the same way. A little song that that's about choices for a moment there, that sets up that you're affecting things. Well, he ultimately he got dragged away last time too, so I figure he probably survives either way. They established that he shoots Chris in that other conversation. But maybe Max will forget, will remember that Laura ran. Maybe I'll just make them feel like way worse of a couple this time. friend welcome to the show we are friends aren't we i've waited for you i've waited yes so i do hope our time together proves enlightening there's no need to worry i'm here to help you think of me as your guide into the unknown it's exciting yes and terrifying but if you're brave enough if you let me help you i can help you we can help each other this is the card you found the fool i wonder who this is we all know a fool when we see one, don't we? Innocence and freedom, or recklessness and risk-taking, spontaneity, actions without thought, but the consequences to match. Think, think, and don't get burnt. I can show you more if you'd like me to. She really does have a whole per uh, performer's shtick set up here. 
that is akin to like how she probably would have done things back at the carnival but now the uh we know that she's like oh she's trying to lure us in because she's actually part of the story and not just a an, a separate narrator character that we've that we've seen in the other stories this is what might come to pass a possible future a path yet unchosen look here look here There are secrets out there, you know. Secrets and lies. Paths to uncover on which I can shed light, if you let me. Help me help you. And remember, what doesn't kill you will make you stronger. So if you cut the fuel line when they try to start the car, it fucking... Lights the car on fire? That's pretty extreme. That would better justify the other storyline where you need the, uh, a whole new car at the end. Goodbye, infuriating children. You know how many hearts are broken on the last day of summer camp? It's like a romance apocalypse. Hello, infuriating adults. Yeah, well, I mean, they're just kids. You know, they'll get over it. Uh-huh. Like they'll get over Emma? What? That's not the same thing. Oh, so that's not why you're in a bad mood. I'm not in a bad... Oh, my... <laughs> you know what? We had our last night together, and we're cool. Oh, yeah. So cool that you're never going to see your special little boo-boo bear ever again. Jesus Christ, you heard that? Oh, come on, dude. The cabin walls are made of band-aids and rat turds. <laughs> okay, I get it. <laughs> okay, quit it. Hi, Emma. Hey. <laughs> okay, this is, um... You've heard of spatial awareness before, yeah. right? Spatial awareness is for nerds. Uh, be a lamb and grab the last couple of bags, will ya? Yes, boss. Say hi to Emma for me. You're a bad person. Yes, I am. It really is just an actual nightmare mess. Why is it like that? Who did that? She's just here to cause mayhem. Hi. Hey, are you guys gonna help with the bags or what? Oh, um, you know, I was actually just working on fixing uh, the door. It's Dylan, come it's on. broken. Dylan, please. I can't. It's, it's. I gotta get the last bags What's in there. Come wrong on. With this thing, it's just. Dylan, closing. please. Close. Sorry, bro. <sighs> cool. Thanks, guys. Those two both warmed on me over time, but they are so infuriating in like the first scene. Where you're just like, this whole, throughout this whole scene, you're like, I don't think I'm like these people. I don't think we're going to be big fans of them. Oh, skill. Weird declaration, bud, but okay. Bit unnecessary. Yeah, see the look at that's that's what the this this why this, all this shit's already stacked on 
the stairs. That was not caused by the scuffle or whatever with the dude where they didn't even actually fight. It's just a strange detail. Okay, really, dude? Locking me out? Okay, in my defense, A, it was Dylan's idea, and two, it was really funny. Oh, yeah, right. Is that is that right? I don't write the rules, man. Okay, whatever. Look, are you gonna help me with the bags or what? Nah, I gotta stay here and wait for Mr. H to return our cell phone. Sorry. Jesus Christ. Okay, and why are the stairs blocked? Well, apparently it's to keep raccoons and other pesky varmints from ransacking the place. Uh, Mr. H's words, not mine. Oh! Boring! <laughs> there's, a, there's always a fun bait and switch when you start a sentence with a certain tone of voice and the words say the opposite of the tone of voice that you're using. It's just, I appreciate that, that just that in general. <laughs> Is that you, Dylan? I can only deal with one shit at a time, Jacob. Ha 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 ha. Uh, so I missed this the first time I was around. Because I found the bags, I guess, too fast? But this time I'm less sure where the bags are. It's a really big building. There we are. The bags. Time to get all, all right. of us killed. All by yourself, huh? Yep. Guess you're gonna have to get used to that. Oh my god, you are so mean. <laughs> At least I'm honest. Oh, okay, here we go. Okay, you're not telling me the whole truth about you and Emma, are you, son? Okay, I'm gonna need you to back all the way out of my business, Caitlin. <laughs> well, excuse me for trying to help. How is making me feel shitty about being dumped supposed to help? Aha! Uh -huh, the plot thickens. She took out the trash. What? No. Uh, mm, wait, check that. First, she cleaned the house. Then, she took out the trash. Then, she washed her hands. Bye-bye, Jake. Now, she's a trash of single, clean hands, ready to mingle. Are you... are you finished? <laughs> oh, I could go all day. Oh, should we test that theory? But I gotta save some for the ride home. Oh, no, I'm, I'm sure you'll find some way to fill the awkward silence. Uh, yep, gonna be a super fun, not at all awkward ride. Thanks for that, bud. Okay, well, at least I went for it this summer. Uh, what's that supposed to mean? Uh, Ryan? Uh, what about him? He's a guy at this camp who just happens to have this whole hot sexy loner thing that totally doesn't do anything for me at all oh and the plot thickens <sighs> so she really just dumped you just like that well technically no but you know she realized that she has her plans and um i have my plans and it wasn't gonna work after today you know and today's already over isn't it and you didn't want to try like long distance or whatever Man, she has got you wrapped all the way around that cute little finger of hers. <laughs> this is bullying. So yeah, they do set up the idea that Ryan could go for uh, Caitlyn or Dylan. Bef and they do that before the actual truth or dare moment. So that's kind of set up. It is really frustrating that like a lot of the characters... Uh, a lot of the characters get set up as romance characters to a fair extent. Uh, I happened to kill off half of each pairing, so we didn't really get to see how those ones pl play out. But if the question is whether or not Dylan and Orion are an example of them getting too shy about the gay thing narratively and just not committing to it, or if every narrative just underdevelops and doesn't go necessarily anywhere. I did find it frustrating that when I saved Max... Uh, you never have a scene between Max and Laura at the end of the game. So it's just, oh well, guess that worked out, or maybe it didn't, and then they're like, I don't know, I guess you went off to college and never saw each other again. We, uh, but I don't know how they do Abigail and Nick, 
and I don't know how they do uh, Emma and Jacob, but uh, I know that the uh, they, they honestly were doing pretty good with uh, with Dylan and Ryan, and uh, it really peaked where with the uh, the radio scene where I had, like I suddenly I'm like oh shit I got, I got like some stuff stuff to talk about about how like the, how they're developing this and how they're writing it and how it's kind of interesting, but. I guess because Dylan can get turned in that scene, he just disappears from the story. Like, he just kind of hangs out in his comedy relief while other people are usually the main characters of those chapters. And uh, he doesn't do anything super impactful. And those two characters are never in the same room ever again after the midpoint of the game. Like, the mo- it's, I think it's maybe a little bit what's frustrating about Laura coming back into the story, even though it's interesting that they, that they were alive all along is that it she very much becomes one of the main characters that they can guarantee is alive at that point and then it just becomes Laura and Ryan go off and do a thing while other people to varying extents just kind of like kill time and uh like yeah like you so in my playthrough you have this setup between Dylan and Ryan for a while and it was getting pretty good and then they never see each other again for like the entire second half of the game. And there's not even like an epilogue where they have any kind of encounter. And you're like, huh, this feels extremely dropped. Oh, but I mean, seriously, come on. She's right. It's just like a stupid summer fling. What else did I think was going to happen? Uh, let's see. Uh, love, stability, engagement, marriage, house, kid, affair, kid, divorce, loneliness, child support, visitation lawsuit, mm. surprise reconciliation, emptiness, retirement, grandkid, 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 a uh, nursing home, and finally, dying in each other's arms and then being buried in each other's arms like those thousand-year-old skeletons they dug up in Rome or something. That kind in the ballpark? Oh, shit, I'm sorry. That was Ryan and me. Uh, let me see. Ah, here it is. Yours just says Roadhead. <laughs> Actually, that's just a generic all-men list. Well, that seems legit. <laughs> okay, so are we sure that this old rust bucket's roadworthy? <laughs> we'll take a look. It better be. One more night in the great outdoors might actually kill me. Hey, what doesn't kill you? Will make you stronger. Well, I haven't killed you yet, and you're still pretty pathetic. Hey, shut up! <clears throat> uh, okay, so, um, total hypothetical, but if I was like a huge asshole and I wanted to break down the van so we'd have to spend another night here, uh, what exactly would I need to do? Well, you'd probably break the fuel line, or I don't know rip out the rotor arm and yes that would make you a total asshole okay and what does a rotor arm look like again it's like a arm that's all rotary you know it's under the little black dome with the leads poking out jake you do realize that even if we somehow did get stuck out here one more night with emma wouldn't make a difference trust me chick's made up her mind yeah sure i guess we'll just have to find out so she never mentions this ever again does she even though she totally knows that he did it and it's kind of like all on him the moment anyone dies all right so this is one choice i cannot change because the rotor arm actually is required to get one of the pieces of evidence so if you pick if you break the fuel line you lock yourself out of that you right back tomorrow. No harm, no foul. Up here, my dudes. Why do they look like they're up to something? Hey, Jacob. What? No, dude, please. Go along. Oh, dick. <laughs> oh, come on, man. I'm so sorry, Jacob. Rough. Hey, maybe uh, you should have put it in airplane mode. Ah, nobody liked that. Oh, shit. 
Sup, man? Shut the fuck up. Oh, yeah, no, no doubt, no <laughs> doubt. God damn, my mom's gonna kill me. Your mom? Oh, yeah, to, uh, to tell her I say hi. <laughs> You're gay. I had to fix it as soon as we're back, man. Well, it's bricked. Crap. Oh, thank God. Huh, not a peep. Either got zero signal, everybody's already forgotten I exist. Meh. You 50, know what, 50. whatever, I can go one more day without a phone. Day? The drive's not that far. You know what I mean. Hey! Where's everybody else? He fucking let it uh, out. Why would I know that? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you know stuff I don't. Look, I don't, I don't <laughs> even know how to respond to that. You say, Nick, you're way smarter than me, and you're a super hot stud who gets any chick he wants. Okay, yeah, keep dreaming, Junior. I mean, sometimes people do know things you don't know. Blowing minds here. Never gonna keep up with all this.